The absolute worst thing you can do after training your pigs to the electric fence is to put them in a situation where you force them to run through an electric fence. Or where an electric fence was. Believe it or not, there are such a thing as easy pasture pig moves, but it takes a little bit of work and preparation to get it right. Let me explain. In one of my last videos, I showed how easy it is to move our pastured pigs day after day after day, especially once you get your pigs used to your system. But you have to give the pigs an opportunity to learn how you manage them. Sue! Come on, pigs! Hey, piglets! Look at all of them come. My goodness, you're getting thin. Oh, look at one of the little babies. One of the brand new babies that Midnight's got right there. These larger piglets that you see right here are eight or nine weeks old at this point. These larger piglets right now are running underneath the fences. Uh, and that's in part by design. You can tell that I put some feet outside the fence that the sows can't get to right here, primarily so that the piglets will always have feed to get. It's a process called creep feeding. Uh, maybe I'll do another video on that some other time. The, the fences over here on this part of the farm are designed for the sows, so the little pigs kind of get used to darting underneath it. When I put them into the pig pen where I train them to the electric fence, they are usually scared to death. They know they can't run through the electric fence because there's a solid barrier. They know that if they touch it, they'll get shocked, but they're very, very hesitant. The absolute worst thing you can do after training your pigs to the electric fence is to put them in a situation where you force them to run through an electric fence. If you have to hurt them or chase them, you are always going to have problems. Once they've been trained to respect the electric fence, it's important that you don't try to push them too far. Most of the problem that comes when moving pigs through different grazing paddocks is because we're trying to force the pigs to move at a certain time. I can't tell you the number of times that I've set up a electric fence right here and an electric fence right there, but because of the design setup, I had to move all the pigs from this paddock to the next paddock over so that I could roll up this paddock. What that means is we usually have to get the pigs to move quickly or we have to get them to move within the first hour or two and we have to push the pigs to move more quickly than they're comfortable. Pigs are smart creatures but just like people they do a lot better when you give them a chance to slowly overcome their hesitation, their fear or whatever on their own. If you try to push a pig through a paddock, if you try to force a pig to do something it's not going to want to do, just like people, a lot of times they will rebel and they'll run through a solid electric fence rather than go into an area where the electric fence is down but they think a fence is. I've been there, I've done that, I've got the stickers and the trophies to prove it. And despite what people will tell you, you can't move pigs through electrified gates and many other things. You can, but you've got to do it right. And it's most difficult with our feeder pigs. Feeder pigs, once they're trained to the electric fence, they need a little bit of time to get used to your new management setup. I'm gonna about to go move some feeder pigs and show you what I do. Unfortunately, the paddock that I'm setting up in uh, is about 120 feet or so across, and it's gonna take just a little bit more work uh, to get the pig paddock set up the way that I want to. Where the breeder gilts are over here is the most recent bit of cross fencing that I've done. This five acre field that the feeder pigs are in, I only put up two cross fences. I need to put up a cross fence to divide this one in half and the one that the pigs are in now in half. I'll do that at some point. But what that means is it takes a little bit more time. You may think that it's twice as much work. It's actually closer to three times because you have more posts to deal with. Doesn't make sense to me, but I promise you it's true. I'm not moving my feeder pigs every day just yet, primarily because the paddock size that they're in that I indicated was a good bit wider. To give them the forage that they need every day, I would, as wide as this paddock is, I would have to um, put up a fresh fence line 
about halfway between these T posts here. And you're cutting a five foot swath with your mower so that you can put your fencing in. You waste a lot of foraging. That's another reason why having longer, skinnier paddocks. I'll give them three or four days uh, where I'm moving them. Well, this is frustrating. I guess I'm gonna have to go get the lawnmower and trim that down a little bit. Where people tend to make the most mistakes is rushing their movements with their pasture pigs. They've gotta be back to work or it's getting dark or something else is going on. So what I've discovered is that with these moves, with strip grazing, the pigs, the younger pigs, like these feeder pigs who aren't quite used to the system, they're not quite aware that that fence is going up. They're still learning the system and it gives them time to adjust to this new schedule at their own pace. Now I must admit that <laughs> it doesn't work out quite as well for the camera because the pigs, instead of all rushing over to jump to the fresh forage, they relish it just as well, but they're hesitant because they still hadn't quite figured everything out like those breeder pigs did yesterday. But the key with most livestock, especially pigs and even cows, is letting them figure it out and learn at their own pace and working with them the way they think, the way they act, and the way they interact with their environments. This group has anywhere from 100 pound pigs to 50 pound pigs. The size of the pig also determines how much they are going to be able to forage and how easy it is to give them a new paddock. Because this group has some 150 pound pigs, but also some 60 or 70 pound pigs in it, it's more important that I get their fence tuned just right to them. It's gotta be off the ground, but not too high, not too short. The like I say, the breeder pigs, they've got the whole system figured out already. And it's usually not a big deal. One strand of wire normally holds them. It's time to pull the old fence line up and let's see if they cross. I don't know if you can tell, but they're standing there and they realize that the fence is down and they're still trying to figure it out. Like I say, they're still a bit skittish. Well, I tangled up the wire. Right now though, they've got free choice feed in the paddock. So normally if you're feeding them by hand, you just wait until it's time to feed them and move them on across. Quite honestly, this group's willingness to go on and jump across the fence for feed says a lot about pigs love of fresh forage. They've got a ton of grain over there in a self feeder and they can eat whatever they want whenever they want. Now see these pigs, they want to come across. That burnt mare across right there wants to come across. That one, that burnt mango barrow right there paced up and down the fence a second ago. See, both those mangoes have crossed now. That's because of their t I gave them their time. But see, that Berkshire right there staring at me is a little hesitant. She's just barely stepping across where that fence line was. Within an hour of moving and pulling up this fence for the pigs to cross, all of them were over the old fence. Now, if I had tried to push the pigs across the fence without giving them their space or time, it would not have gone well. But strip grazing offers them the opportunity to learn at their own pace. With smaller pigs, they aren't going to take advantage of the forage like the bigger pigs, so giving them three or four days per move is okay, even if it's not ideal. Now, in this field here, I definitely need to add more cross fencing so that this strip grazing is much more efficient.